Hi, welcome back to our Swift UI for Beginners series. In this video, we are going to create a contacts app. By doing this, we'll learn how to present data in rows by using Swift UI lists. We will also learn how to let the user navigate between multiple views. Let's start with creating a new project and importing the image files. Open Xcode and create a new project. Then select app under multi-platform or iOS and click on next. Name your project and make sure you use Swift UI as the interface mode. Our Xcode project opens up with presenting the default contentview.swift file. Before we start creating our contacts app, we need to import the images we'll use for our contacts photos. To do this, open the assets folder and drag and drop the image files right into it. You can find a download link to these images in this video's description. Make sure the images are named correctly. Great. We're done with setting up our app's project. So let's dive into coding our contacts app. Let's start by setting up a list containing our contacts. A list contains multiple rows of data in a single column. Let's embed the default hello world text into a list to see how it looks like. You see that Swift UI automatically created a row for us. Note that each view inside a list gets its own row. Currently that's our hello world text only. Each row in our list should contain the contacts photo, its name and its phone number. Let's start composing the row by embedding a text view into a vStack. Replace its string with a sample contact name and place another text view below it. Let's use a sample phone number as the text view string. Let's highlight the contact name by applying the font modifier with the custom option. To align all views on the left side, let's use the leading alignment mode for our V stack. On the left side of the contact's name and number we want to show its photo. To do this we need to embed the vStack into a hStack first. Next we can insert an image view above the vStack for creating a sample contact photo. For keeping our code clean, let's outsource our hStack. Let's name the extracted subview contact row. Before we can make our list dynamic, we need to define a data model. We need this data model to represent the data for each contact inside the list. To do this, create a new Swift file. Let's call this file contact. Make sure the Swift UI kit is imported. For handling our contacts, we create a struct called contact. We want to know the following information of each contact. Its name, phone number, email, its address and the name of the corresponding image inside our assets folder. To do this let's declare the corresponding properties. We will use our contact data model to wrap multiple instances of it into a list. 
To achieve this we need it to conform to the identifiable protocol. This is required to pass instances of our custom struct into lists in Swift UI. The identifiable protocol has only one mandatory requirement. It needs the class to contain an attribute to identify every instance by a unique identifier. Therefore we simply declare an ID attribute and assign a new UID instance to it when initializing a contact. Using UID instances is automatically creating unique identifiers for us. Below our contact struct we can insert an array for holding all the contacts for our app. Feel free to copy and paste the array from the link we provided in the description. Of course you can edit this array as you like. Back to our content view. We are now ready to pass our contacts data set to our list like this. By doing this our list cycles through our contacts array and creates one contact row for every contact instance inside it. Of course not every row should display the same sample contact data. Thus we add a contact variable to our contact row struct. We initialize this property by passing the particular contact instance in our content views list. Now we can replace the strings in our contact rows text views with the corresponding properties of the past contact property. Let's take a look at our preview canvas. You see that the list successfully cycles through all elements in the contacts array. It creates one contact row for each element by passing that particular contact instance to the contact row view. When the user taps on a particular contact row, we want to present a new view with detailed information about this contact. To do this, we create a new Swift UI view and call it Detail View. As we did in our contact row view we declare a contact property. This property will be initialized in our content view later on. However the corresponding preview struct needs to know which contact to use. For this purpose we just use the first element of our contacts array. Now we're ready to set up the interface of our detail view. We start with replacing the default hello world text with an image view to display the contacts photo. Next we wrap the image view into a vStack. Then place a text view below it for displaying the contact's name. Below the contact's name we insert three hstacks for presenting the contact's phone number email and its address.
To be honest that doesn't look very nice. Let's change this by wrapping the three H stacks into a so-called form. Looks much better now. A form groups views in a manner you know for example from the system settings app. The cool thing about forms is that Swift UI automatically adapts the layout and appearance of the views wrapped inside the form for us. Let's say we want to add the views to our row. One button for texting the contact and one for calling him. But we want those two to be separated from the other views inside the form. To do this we wrap those into sections like this. We're already finished with composing the interface of our detailed view. The preview of the detailed view should look like this. Now it's time to connect it to the content view. When the user taps on a particular contact row, we want it to open the detail view with showing the detailed information about the selected contact. We want to navigate to the corresponding detail view when we tap on a certain contact row. To do this, we need to embed our content views list into a navigation view like this. However, our content view doesn't have a navigation bar yet. To change this, we append the navigation bar title modifier to our list. Swift UI appends a large navigation bar by default. If you want to use the smaller one, you can use the display mode argument while choosing the inline option. But for now, we are fine with the default navigation bar style. To navigate to the detail view when tapping on a row we wrap each contact row instance that gets created inside the list into a navigation link. We use that instance as the link's destination. The navigation link tells Swift UI to push the detail view equipped with the past contact instance to the top of the navigation hierarchy. We can see how this looks like by running our app in the live preview. Awesome. By using our navigation view we are able to stack our content view and our detail view in a navigation hierarchy. This allows the user to navigate between them. That's it. We are finished with creating our own contacts app. We learn it how to present data inside lists and how to cluster views inside forms. We also learn it how to navigate between several views by using a navigation view hierarchy. We've uploaded the whole source code to GitHub. You can find the link to the repository in the description of this video. Maybe you're asking yourself how you can navigate between views independently by not using a navigation view stack. Then take a look at another tutorial on our website. Also a link to this post can be found in the description. In the next part we're going to build a timer app. You will how learn to create more dynamic interfaces and how to use system icons in Swift UI. You will get familiar observable objects and the published property wrapper and how to use them as your view models. Until then make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss any new videos.